Let's turn to small cell lung cancer. I would have to say this was not a NASCO with blockbusters in small cell. The, the, I think, most definitive results in small cell were definitively negative, specifically this trial called Skyscraper 2, which has a, a combines a checkpoint inhibitor against PD-1 uh, with uh, tirigolumab, which is an, a T-cell targeted immunotherapy. So looking at chemo with, uh, with our standard immunotherapy today, with or without this additional immunotherapy, anti tigit tirigolumab or placebo. And uh, this was first-line treatment for patients with extensive stage or metastatic small cell lung cancer, which is about two-thirds of the small cell we see. And the results were just negative. Uh, there was no improvement in progression-free survival, no improvement in overall survival. And my questions to you are... Um, how far is the kind of anti-halo effect of this? That uh, this, you know, Dr. Rudin, who presented this, to his credit, was very forthright saying, this is, this is just not good. This was not, there's nothing about this to save it. Um, it's definitely not appealing in small cell. Question is, is this, you know, just this agent? Is it just the setting of small cell? I personally would have to say, as negative as this is, I think it bodes poorly for TIGIT and tirigolumab in general and TIGIT in general for lung cancer and maybe beyond that. And um, Jerushka, can you comment on, on that? And then I'll have a follow-up question that's a little more upbeat. Yeah, no, I think um, I think Dr. Rudin really presented the data exactly as they are. Um, unfortunately, this is negative. There is no benefit that we can see from it. Um, I think small cell lung cancer is, as we know from many years, is just a much tougher space to innovate in. And this is why we were so excited about the previous study in which atezolizumab added to chemotherapy demonstrated a benefit, even though some said that benefit was marginal. It was the first benefit that we had seen in over 30 years. So, um, so to have sort of another success so hot on its heels, I think is unfortunately not something that we're used to seeing in small cell and didn't happen here. Um, uh, I would be interested to see how this pans out in non-small cell lung cancer. Hopefully the bar is, is a little bit lower in that sense and, and, and maybe there might be something there, but you're right. Um, unfortunately, I think uh, going beyond PD-1 and PDL one in lung cancer is just going to be a, a, a much more difficult area to innovate in. And Gilberto, what are your thoughts on, on you know, how, how, how ominous is this in non-small cell and other settings? Because, I mean, let's remember, even our less positive PDL one trials in, in small cell were close. And, you know, most of the settings, it, it's been, it's had good signals, uh, even when it hasn't been a, a home run. So how bad is that? And then my follow-up question is, where do you see the innovation, the, the hope uh, of, of next improvements? Is it in limited stage or, uh, or relapsed targeted therapies in small cell? Let me, let me take that first. So we haven't really brought to limited stage everything that we have shown works in extensive stage. So hopefully we'll be seeing those trials coming soon, trying to incorporate immunotherapies in general in earlier stage small cell lung cancer. This, without a doubt, is a negative trial. The big question is certain companies do believe that their anti-tickets are better than others. Um, time will tell if they're right or wrong. Unfortunately, I think that this dampened enthusiasm is overall. There have been billions of dollars invested in anti-tickets, so it's a shame to see so much money going into a strategy that most likely will not work. 